Okay, so first things first, we have to remove the two screws that are holding the seat onto the base. Okay, then the next step is to deconstruct this. And I frequently just use a flathead screwdriver and get it up underneath there and pry up the staples. Okay, then take the fabric off of the foam. And then you're gonna to wanna to grab a set of pliers to take out these last few staples that are sticking up. Okay, so that's good. You don't have to take out every single staple. You can if you want, but it's really not necessary. Okay, so I want you to notice one thing here. The platform is a little bit smaller than the foam. The foam is always cut slightly larger than the platform. And that's standard for this type of upholstery where you have a wood platform with foam. And this foam is actually glued to, actually this one's not so glued, the other one is really glued, but it's glued to the wood. So we need to now cut out our fabric um, for, for this. So the first part we're gonna cut out is the center circle. And I'm gonna show you this, I have this on another tutorial, but the key to this is to cut out your circle about half an inch larger than this in order to not have it be shifting once you put it back together like I showed in the intro. You want your circle to be just slightly smaller than the circumference of this foam so that your welt sits on the top of your foam. You don't want your welt to be shifting and some of it down here and some of it on the top. So that's why you wanna cut your round circle slightly smaller than this and I'll show you exactly how to do that now. Okay, so here's the trick to cutting out your foam to be exactly the right size. I've got my square of fabric here and you're going to grab a bobbin. This is a bobbin that has a hole in the center. See that hole? And a pencil that will show up on your fabric. And you are gonna run your bobbin right next to the wood platform. You're gonna put your pencil in there and you're gonna run your bobbin and mark your fabric, just making sure that you keep your bobbin right up against the wood platform. So you, because this foam is glued down, I'm having to pull it back so I can make sure that my bobbin is right up against the wood. But if your foam is not glued down, it would be a lot easier. So you can utilize this method on any shaped platform. If you're doing dining room chairs or any type of chair seat, this is the best method for getting the proper size on your cut. So there we go. You can see my perfect circle, the blue pencil. I'm not sure you can see that, but anyway, that's it. So the next step is just to cut this out. Okay, so the next step to this is to attach the welt to the top of the circle. And I've already got my welt made. And um, this part, you may want to go ahead and pin your welt on just to make it easier at the sewing machine for yourself. But I do have a couple tricks for this because this part's super important. So the first thing that you want to do is you need to notch your welt so that it will curve around your circle. That allows this to open up and curve Otherwise, if it's not, it won't, see how that folds down? It won't, it won't open up and curve. So you've got a notch. Obviously you want to cut, but not cut into that stitch line. That's super important. Okay, so here we are at my sewing machine. There's a couple ways you can do this. And I am, this is for a home sewer, somebody with a home sewing machine, not a commercial sewing machine with a walking foot. If you have a walking foot, then you can just disregard this and sew this on.
But with a home sewing machine, your foot, your feed dogs will pull this bottom fabric through the machine a little bit faster than this stiff welt will come through the machine. And what that'll do is it'll cause your fabric to just slightly pucker and it will make your, your circle smaller. So when you get this sewn all the way around, you'll take it to your foam and it'll be actually too small. Um, and this is a common thing with home sewing machines and two different, I mean, even if I were sewing together two pieces of the same exact fabric, the machine will pull through this fabric faster than the top fabric. And when, even if you start the beginning of your project with your seams lined up just like that, nice and square, when you get to the bottom, you'll notice that you're gonna be off square. Your, your top fabric will be actually longer than your bottom and you're gonna wonder what the heck happened? Why does that always happen? It's because your, your feed dog pulls the bottom fabric through a little bit quicker. So one way to remedy that is to actually pin this down. So you would just obviously pin down the welt to the fabric. That's one way to do it. If you're new, that's the way I would do it because it just holds everything nice and steady. I would pin it probably every two, three inches. And with this, I like to let my welt hang off the edge of the fabric just a hair because I cut my welt two inches. Um, so you wanna let it hang off because you've got about an inch or five eighths of that of a allowance. And if you line that right up, it'll be a little bit too small. Your circle will be a little bit too small. So let the welt hang over just a hair because you want your seam, you want this to be sewn on at a half an inch. That's what we accounted for with the, um, and you could trim down your welt. That's typically what people do is trim down their welt. Okay, so then the other way to remedy the, 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 the fabric coming through the machine at two different rates is, and this is always happens with cushions. If you're making cushions with a home sewing machine, you have to either pin or the other way you could do this is to run your welt through first. So you would flip over your fabric and you'd have the welt on the bottom so that your welt is against your feed dog. So this is the way you would do it. And obviously I've got my zipper foot on here. I never use a welt foot. I just prefer to use a zipper foot. If you have a welt foot, by all means use it. Um, and so you just run your, sew this with the welt on the bottom and that remedies the fabric slide because it, the feed dog, because this is so stiff, the feed dog pulls this through. It goes through at the same rate. I don't know why. It just, that's the way it works. So that's a big tip on this is to either pin your welt onto your fabric or send it through your machine with a welt on the bottom. So that's important. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to um, finish this end. So you're going to open up your welt. I have no idea where my seam ripper is. It's usually on the floor because it's round and rolls off my sewing table constantly. They need to make those handles on the seam rippers square so they don't roll. So you're gonna open up your welt and you're gonna cut out a piece of that. So where, right where that meets up this other piece here, just line that up, snip that off, and there, that's perfect. Now, you're going to fold this in, so you've got a nice finished edge there. Put that in there. Make sure that gets right up in there. Drop that down. So you see, Nice overlap there. Now sew that down. Okay, so now we gotta cut our boxing, which is the piece that goes around the edge. That's called the boxing. 
And I've got one piece already cut. I cut mine to one, two, three, four, five, six inches. Um, this is, uh, I think, three inches. No, it's two and a half. So I like to just do it extra wide because when you're putting this on, it's difficult to pull it because it's very tight. So I like to give myself plenty of room for plenty of fabric to grab onto. Okay, so same thing here um, with this boxing piece. We're gonna sew this on, obviously right side to right side. So turn this upside down. We're gonna sew it on like this all the way around. We're gonna pin it um, so we don't get that fabric, you know, shifting under the, with the feed dog and the presser foot. So the first thing that we've gotta do is put little notches in this the same way we did with the welt so it'll actually bend around this curve. Otherwise, it's not gonna bend around this curve. And then we'll pin it on. Let me grab my scissors. Okay, so we're gonna notch this out. Okay, so I'm just sewing this on, the boxing onto the uh, top platform and the welt. And you could actually do this as one step, but it's not as precise if you're new. So that's why I show you how to do it in two different steps. But this part, it's pretty important that you pin that boxing on because otherwise it will do that shifting under the foot and your boxing will um, end up being too tight. And with your, because this is a circle, it want, your fabric tends to want to pucker. So that's why I'm kind of doing this in short bursts in order to kind of ease my fabric back with my fingers here as I'm sewing it so that I don't have any puckering going on. So that's important to do this slowly and kind of push your fabric back so you're not getting puckering. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the joining here. So we're going to put one more notch here. And so I'm going to just pull those together and pin that. Okay. And then I'm gonna sew right here. Okay. So I'm gonna square up these two boxing pieces and then sew straight down 90 degrees to that pin. When you get up to the welt, you wanna make sure you get your presser foot right up against where your welt is folded in half. cut that seam and then go back and finish sewing along there. Open that seam up. Okay, now you can turn it right side out and make sure you got a nice tight seam here. Um, sometimes it can be difficult to sew right up against your welt. So just make sure that you've got a nice tight seam there. Okay, so I put a Home Depot bag over this. The upholstery supply stores have uh, plastic that is made for this purpose. I can't remember what it's called. I never buy it. But this will make it a lot easier to slide this on here. Okay, so we wrestled that alligator and got that on there nice and snug. 
and the next step is to staple it around the bottom. Now, this is the second part to getting this so that this box is the same all the way around and you don't have this weird waviness going on. So with this step, you're gonna take your staple gun and you're gonna hold this like this and staple as you go around, making sure this is the same distance. So if you're new at this and you don't have a good eye, then you want to probably measure so that it's the same all the way around. And um, pull and hold, measure, that's perfect to a half. Pull, hold, measure, that's a little tight. There we go. Pull and hold, measure, that's perfect. And just go all the way around. Another little thing to remember as you're going on this, as you're pulling and measuring and stapling, you also want to bring this fabric kind of back towards you as you're stapling. Because otherwise you'll get around to the end and you'll have a whole bunch of gathering and you don't want you know, a whole bunch of fabric to be gathering and puckering as you go. So I pull the fabric kind of back towards me to ease it around so that my gathering is kind of like that towards me so that it doesn't all end up gathering at the end. So there we go. I might need to put in a few more staples in between here, but probably not because the next step is welt and we're going to put more staples on for the welt. Okay, so my welt is notched and cut to the right length. We're going to staple this on to this edge so that way you've got the double, double box. Okay, and the way that I do this is I lay it on the edge and then I just feel underneath it and make sure that it's actually coming off of the edge. So that's the way I, I hold it. I hold it so that the welt is coming off the edge of my platform and I'm out of staples. Okay, so here we go again. Got some staples. Just feel your way around, making sure that the welt is actually off the edge. So there we go. Okay, now the last thing is just to cut this extra fabric and then reattach this to our chair. Now, the way that my chair frame is, is it holds, it supports this. Um, if my chair frame didn't support it, I would need to put some cardboard um, edging on here so this doesn't do this. So. My, uh, my frame, I'll show you, comes right to the edge so it'll hold this in place. If not, it, it does that. And you don't want that. You would have to put that cardboard edging there, staple that cardboard edging there so that this doesn't do that. Otherwise it just gets messy. I'll show you my chair. So that's the way mine is and see how the frame supports it. It comes right to the edge. So when this is screwed on, this is really nice and tight in there. So that's it, you guys, that's all done. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this back on, line up those holes again, put it back on, and that's a done deal.